and rising galactic jedis how are you guys doing i hope you guys are all doing great on this monday evening today is the first of april april fools right i got a notification from 45 saying that he was going to quit his campaign and for a minute there it said and then it said click here to read more so i clicked there to read more because i you know when i heard that i was thinking oh no how can this be this must be april fool's day joke and so of course he did say april fool's day so that was a little prank by uh, 45 himself who is full of humor all right so uh two things about myself that you guys didn't know about me is that I don't like any sugar. I uh, I have no interest in sweets. I never, even as a kid, I didn't really like candy much. So I don't know if that was genetically programmed in me, but I was just never fond of sugar. Okay, so sugar and meat don't mix. However, I do take some honey with my morning tea, and also as a as one of the uh, you know my one of my pre workout substances that that is all natural and organic next to of course red ginseng cordyceps and green tea which is all natural so i do like honey but i don't like any any sweets okay i can do pies i can do cakes i can do desserts and uh, people that know me used to always tell me you must be an alien because you're not normal most people do like dessert <laughs> and i never really did like dessert um, another thing about me is that in past lives, I've, I've had, in the course of my lifetime, I've had a couple of live regressions, and I was able to tap into some of my past lives. And one thing that they all had in common is that in each and every single past life that I was ever, that, you know, they've ever read on me, uh, the mediums that I've known throughout my life, they've all agreed on one thing, that I was always like a, like an herbalist, like a, like a healer. Like, you know, like um, a person who was like, you know, like, like a wizard man, like a, like a hermit, like an alchemist. They said I was always an alchemist. I was always into, you know, plant medicine, natural medicine. Um, I used to live uh, by myself a lot up in the mountains as the healer of the mountains. I used to have names that people used to call me. So I, I guess I've always been, you know, into this stuff. I've always been into metaphysics, alternative, holistic, natural medicine. I've always been into the natural, organic path of, of, you know, just being in tune with the elements, being in tune with the unified field, with Mother Earth, um, and, and so on and so forth. I've always been that way. So, you know, they say now we are the accumulation of our, of all our incarnations, right? As we are approaching the final incarnation, as we uh, end many, many cycles. Now, today's topic is, um, you know, let's let's talk about what's what's going to be what's happening right now in terms of the geopolitical arena okay so a lot of things are you could say moving forward um like i said before there are multiple timelines that are actually coexisting right now but as of the 8th of april all of those different timelines are going to collapse into three overall timelines so for instance in the positive timeline we are going to see some sort of transition right the, the end ring of the old empire, right, represented by the crown of the serpent and the reinstatement of the uh, new kingdom represented by the lion, Leo, the rise of the, the house of, you know, of the lion, right, pretty much. That's the bloodline that the cabal has been after for thousands of years, you know, uh, that technically comes from the real seat of King David and Solomon, Jesus, Mary Magdalene. But that's what we're seeing here, you know, throughout all of history. I don't know if you guys noticed, but every solar eclipse signifies the ending or the, you know, the of a king, right? Whether it's through intention or by accident. Uh, but I'm sure there's some impulse, some, you know, guiding force that is causing everything to happen. You know, there is a bigger, you could say there is an intelligent designer that is orchestrating everything from a higher dimension. Um, you know, it turns out that what, what's happening here in the third dimensional level of reality is just a reflection, rather a, a last, you know, play out between what has been going on in higher dimensional levels of reality. So on the positive timeline, we are going to see the fall of, again, the globalist agenda. Now, in our media, it's going to appear as if, you know, the guy from... R-U-S-S-I-A-P-U-T-I-N, you guys know who I'm talking about, um, is going to dissolve the entire European Union. And so that's what's going to be happening. 
um, in the positive timeline. We're also going to see the, uh, we could say the arrest of uh, Brandon and all the, uh, you know, all the agents of the dark side that, that have been working and supporting him. We're also going to see them in the positive timeline. And, you know, it's inevitable, you know, not only is, TRUMP45 returning probably before November, they're saying. Um, you know, even through the media, they're they're telling us, you know, to prepare, right? To have like weeks worth of food and stuff like that. I, I think that to some extent the Y hats are, you know, they have taken over the media to an extent to the point where I think it's coming from the Y hats when they're warning us about something. Okay, so I think what that something is, it's the EBS, okay? But at the same time, understand that on the negative path, on the negative timeline, the cabal, in an effort to try to main their, maintain their power over the earth, um, you know, they are trying to do one last sacrifice. Of course, you know, we heard that two days ago, they sacrificed the red heifer, right, which is a ritual that the uh, people in, you know, that's the political Zionists have been doing um, for, for many, many, many years. And... Um, that is was supposed to be combined with some, believe it or not, they were going to use, they were going to use, again, you know, their connections to the negative AI to create some sort of natural disaster that would obliterate 98% of the world population, okay? So because of the fact that the White Knights, right, the White Hats and the Earth Alliance, in collaboration with the Galactics, they were able to cancel that timeline long ago. So, um, so that timeline is no longer going to be an issue anymore, okay? The last thing that we saw that we witnessed um, was, of course, the, uh, the collapsing of the bridge that happened recently, okay? That was it. After that, um, we are going to be entering a new timeline as a, as a result of a conversion that is going to be taking place. And, yes, they are going to be firing up the uh, particle accelerator, but, again, there's multiple Earths that are taking place. So on a positive timeline, it's being fired, fired up by the good guys in order to collapse all the different negative timelines into only the three, the three timelines, the positive, the middle, and the third timeline, okay, which is a negative timeline, um, in order to usher in the harvest, the harvest, which is the separation of the righteous from the wicked. So on a positive timeline, and right now it seems like um, – all eyes are on us. You know, it seems like um, they are also requiring um, our collective energy, right? That's why I'm doing the meditation on that day, because I want to bring in as many people as possible to uh, anchoring in the positive timeline, because they do need our help. We are the ground crew. So the Galactics could, could only do their part, and they are. They are actually bringing in um, over... I believe it's over 21 million uh, ships and fleets that are all parked within our atmosphere uh, just to make sure that the cabal is, you know, not going to be able to pull any negative timeline altercation of any kind, any shenanigans. So we do have help from the Galactics. We also have four major biospheres, uh, one of them being the uh, New Jerusalem, um, also known as the Dove in the esoteric tradition. Now, the New Jerusalem is actually... Um, it's funny because right where the uh, the cross of the of the solar eclipse, which is going to be taking place somewhere in the Midwest or Mid East, yeah, Mid, Mid East, I think, on a city called um, called Rapture, they they say that the uh, New Jerusalem has its wings over the Mid East, and then on the far west coast we have another uh, mothership, another biosphere, and then um, that is assisting. The New Jerusalem, and then of course on the East Coast we have a third mothership. So right over the United States of America, there are three huge motherships that are just kind of stationed, okay? Um, because there is going to be a, a, a some sort of interdimensional shift. You know, there is going to be some sort of convergence of different realities taking place. Because again, both on the negative uh, spectrum of the timelines, the forces of darkness are going to try to open up, um, you know, the, the, they're going to try to open up portals one final time in order to usher in uh, dark forces, right? And then, you know, if you go back to 100 years ago, was it exactly what, back in 19, I think it was in 1908 where, um, what's his name, Aleister Crawley uh, called in, again, by opening up a portal, called in 
the demon, which was really an archon force, um, and you know that took over the affairs of the cabal, but it was Alistair Crowley that called him. I think he, he went by the name of Iowa or something. So he called in this demon, this archon energy called Iowa, and Iowa is supposed to be like the last embodiment of you know of the dark forces uh, that has been influencing the third dimensional cabal for the last century. So what's happening right now is that the Y hats, because of the fact that they do have the advantage of the uh, time travel technology, right? They do have a time corpse that is broadcasting from the future that is existing in a pocket reality right here, invincible, invincible, right? Unnoticed, that's the word I'm looking for. They're, they're cloaked from our current reality that are actually making sure that on every probable reality, um, none of the negative stuff, doomsday, natural disasters, you know, the explosion of volcanoes, earthquakes, tsunamis, that none of that stuff happens, okay? So all of that stuff was actually engraved in the minds of the people by the dark forces, right? For centuries, right? They've been grooming people for that type of for that type of scenario, right? Where, you know, there's a bunch of disaster taking place and 98% of the population dies. And that's not the case, guys, okay? So the good news is, is that we are going to be experiencing a shift, a shift into a positive timeline now for the collective, all right, for the collective. So the Galactics are on it, okay? The Galactics are here. Um, the Y Hats are about to execute their final um, plan through the guy from the East, Russia, as he dismantles what's left of the European Union and NATO. Maybe I shouldn't be saying this. Uh, and then, of course, um, here in the West, um, we're going to be seeing the arrest of, of course, the puppets that are left okay we're going to be seeing that all right and so it's important right now to make sure that you guys have at least two weeks of food supply because uh this is the calm before the storm and it's not just coming from me all right a lot of you guys are sensing it right you guys are also intuitive enough to understand that this is what's happening but it's also coming from many di different sources and, av and avenues okay they're all confirming the same thing now another thing that i wanted to make um mention here is the fact that when our founding fathers first established this country. They didn't establish it with a two-party system. I don't know if you guys remember, but according to the original constitution, it was supposed to be a no-party system, which is exactly what Robert F. Kennedy is doing. He is running as an independent autonomous. That's the way it should have always been, right? So this is another example of how the Y hats are also putting the, uh, you know, the, the restraining on the Democrats, right? From both sides, you have, you know, 45 from one side. And then now running as independent, you have Robert uh, F. Kennedy, right? On the other side. So what's happening is Robert F. Kennedy, as of the last four days, um, is going to be allowed to be on the ballot as an independent, okay? He's neither Republican or Democrat. So that's Putting the squeeze in on the, you could say it's it's pretty much a, in terms of playing a chess game, that is, that's the White Hats just kind of checkmating the cabal, even within the own political arena within here, you know, within the U.S. government. So that's exactly what's happening, you know. Um, on the positive timeline, we are going to be seeing a revelation like no other. Everything that we've been hearing since 2016 um, which, again, a lot of it has been fluctuating, right? You guys have to remember, and I've said this before in many other interviews, and I've said this before in many other lives, that there is this element of a time war that is taking place on all these different realities, okay? It seems like the both the forces of good and the forces of evil have implemented the technology of time travel for billions of years, guys, for billions of years. So because of the element, because of this time war that's been going on, you have to understand that things are constantly fluctuating, okay? And also to bear in mind is the fact that we have been operating under a wrong timekeeping system, okay? The calendar that was enforced on us by the cabal, right? When they took off their, you know, their their uh, togas and put on religious robes, right? They What they did is they converted the Julian calendar into the Gregorian calendar, which threw us off of the natural timekeeping system which is aligned with 30 days or 31 days. I believe so. Um, that was known as the original sacred calendar. And some people say it's, it's aligned with 28 days, but there's two, two sacred calendars, okay? One is a moon, a lunar calendar, and the other one is a solar calendar. And I believe that the, uh, the uh, Essenes, 
right? The scenes, those that uh, were associated with Jesus and Mary Magdalene, you know, their secret private community at Konram, I believe that they were still using the solar calendar. So we don't use the solar calendar, right? We use a different calendar um, where we have 365 days as opposed to, as opposed to we should have had 358 days according to the original solar calendar. And that explains why there is leap year every four years, okay? So, um, Things are reaching a climax now. You know, we, we are in prophetic times, but there are two outcomes in these prophecies. And these two outcomes have been greatly detailed in every ancient manuscript, okay? Um, there, every ancient manuscript talks about this time, right? They talk about how, you know, things are, we're going to get chaotic. You know, some, in, some verses in the Bible talked about the, the idea that as it was during the days of Noah, so shall it be during, you know, the end or during the days, the days of what they call the second coming. But uh, of course, you have to understand that the whole purpose of the second coming is the fact that um, the second coming is really the ignition of the solar flash. OK, uh, that is the true metaphysical meaning of the second coming It's the solar flash uh, activating the Christ mind in millions of us, the volunteers, the ground crew, those that volunteer. So. That is the true meaning of the second coming of the Christ. So the elites have known that also. Of course, the elites have had access to these secret prophecies. And they have always feared the day that this you know, solar flash would take place to the point where they knew that this would activate certain dormant DNA within certain people in the human race. And that these people, which they call the 144,000, again, which is a metaphor describing the millions of you know, advanced souls that are here in human form, uh, that they would be, re you know, activating their dormant abilities and that they would have access to powers or these abilities very likened to the X-Men that we watch or, in, you know, Marvel movies and stuff. And so the Cabal has always known about this, okay? So they fear this day. So I forgot to mention the day in history. <laughs> I guess it's too late now, right? Today is, I did mention the date, April the 1st. Um, now, today in history, actually, you know, let me share what happened today in history. So in the year 1945, U.S. troops land on the Okinawa um, Island, which is, uh, at, you know, that was at the end of the uh, Second World War. So we do know that on this day, April 1st, in the year 1945, after suffering the loss of 116 planes and damage to three aircraft carriers, 50,000 U.S. combat troops under the command of Lieutenant General Simon B. Buckner Jr., landed on the southwest coast of the Japanese island of Okinawa, 350 miles south of Kyushu, the southern mainland of Japan, or the southern um, the main island of Japan, determined to seize Okinawa as a base of operations for the Army ground and air forces for a later assault on mainland Japan, more than 1,300 ships converged on the island finally putting ashore uh, 50,000 combat troops. Okay, so this is uh, an, today in history. <laughs> I forgot to mention that at the top of the live. So uh, another thing confirmed, guys, okay? Hollywood is in panic, right? Um, we're seeing this ripple out in the positive timeline. So not only are we going to be witnessing the fall of the globalist European NATO faction, the fall of what's happening here in, in our country, but we're also going to be seeing, seeing the, the exposure of the pedophilia network. And, of course, um, you know, let's just call it Hollyweird, okay? Hollyweird. <laughs> so all that stuff is, is, is already brewing in the positive timeline, okay? Um, another thing that is also uh, taking effect is that for those that have been feeling what the CMEs that have been coming in, over 17 M-class Flares, no, X-class flares. I'm sorry, M. Yeah, I was right the first time. Over 17 M-class flares within the last few days and one X-class flare that I think was registering at 1.1. Um, that is huge. That is the biggest X-class solar flare that we've ever experienced, okay? So that is also happening. So at the cellular level, we are activating. We are genetically being upgraded, all right? We're going from a two-strand DNA Homo sapiens sapien into a 12 strand DNA, Homo luminous or Homo galactus. There are so many names to describe what many have prophesied to be the next stage of human evolution. Um, 
Another good thing, another good thing that's happening right now is that the the last space underground tunnel, which was located, which was actually that belonged to Enki and his uh, 100 Igigi, which are the fallen Anunnaki, that existed in Africa has been cleared. So that base has been cleared as well. So now all the underground bases are, are cleared, okay? And at the same time, um, unfortunately, it was confirmed. Uh, I'm just going to say her initials, okay? I'm, I think you guys know who I'm going to be referring to. Um, KM was actually one of the Cabal's last sacrifice. So that has been confirmed as well. Unfortunately for her, she was the last sacrifice. And then as a result of that, that gave uh, the White Hat Military Earth Alliance uh, team the reason, gave them reason to arrest the royals because that was it, all right? Um, they're supposed to be honoring the new covenant. They're supposed to be honoring the new covenant. And because they have not honored the new covenant that they themselves signed, right, which is a cease to surrender covenant that they signed, right, they committed one last ritual, um, they had to be arrested, okay? So the, the royals are done with, guys. We're not going to see that filthy bloodline anymore uh, ruling the rings of power here in Great Britain. And that is a fact. So... Um, I just wanted to uh, confirm that, you know, right now there are multiple Earths existing, all right? They say that we are, throughout the day, they say that we are constantly shifting from one parallel reality to the, another based on our thoughts and emotions. So it is important to begin to control your thoughts at this time right now, guys, because all of these timelines, again, they're going to reach a collapsing point on the 8th of April. All right. So we want to make sure that out of all those timelines within the spectrum of all negatives and all positives, that we only end up in positive lines. OK. Or whatever variation of those positive timelines. So, again, all of the negative timelines have have been canceled and are not going to be happening for the collective. OK. It turns out that there is enough people on the planet that are waking up. Whether we know it or not, people are waking up, okay? Uh, there's been a huge uh, energetic impact that has been taking place as a result of all of the work that each and every single light warrior, all of you, me, everyone, you know, all of the, our combined collective effort has been impacting the collective of humanity. So there will be a shift in consciousness pretty, pretty soon as a result of this bifurcation in timeline. Um Again, nobody knows the day or the time when the solar flash is going to happen. But what we do know is that there will be a, a collapsing of the timelines as a result of this solar eclipse, which was also part of the prophecies. Okay, A lot of the signs would be in the heavens, right? We, we, we read about this in every ancient account. The Mahabharata, the Rig Vedas, you know, the Judeo-Christian books. They all talk about the, the signs in the heavens. So it's all happening now, you know. But... Um, you know, overall, is overall we, we have to understand that we are living in the best times ever, that we have nothing to worry about, okay? It's very important, guys, to remember that thoughts create. That's why I am the biggest, you know, um, you could say supporter of the positive and, and thinking positive thoughts and not feeding into the fear porn and negative agenda because what you think, you co-create, Okay. There is individual creation and then there's, co there's collective co-creation, right? The difference is individual individuality creation is you creating your own life through what you expect, your fundamental belief systems, and pretty much what governs your subconscious mind uh, for the most part. And then there is collective co-creation, which is that out of all the 8 billion so-called people on the planet, because we are connected via this organic mind hive, we are constantly shifting the collective hologram for everyone else based on everybody's thoughts. So um, right now we are reaching a critical point. We are going to be seeing, you know, a mass acceleration of, of, of this great awakening. And many believe that that is going to be the result of the actual EBS finally coming forward. All right. So that is great, great news. Um, so we have all the protection you know, from all the different races, from the angelics, the archangelics, the cosmic reaches, the dragons, the felines, um, every every positive race is here in our solar system, in our atmosphere, with 
millions of fleets, four major biospheres motherships, the sizes of continents that are located here around the United States of America, okay? Because their plan was to create havoc, to wreak havoc, to sink the coastlines, to, um, you know, ignite the fault lines, to um, ignite the volcanoes and all that stuff, like Yellowstone, you know, Yosemite. Um, that would have been disastrous. That would have been disastrous, right? But again, all of that stuff has been canceled thanks to the Great Awakening that is taking place. Now, I don't know if you guys noticed, but in the picture that I used as the thumbnail for this slide, we have, you know, all of the Y hats that have ever existed since the beginning of this country, from George Washington to Thomas Jefferson, Lincoln, Andrew Jackson, um, and all of those patriots, all of those patriots that remained loyal to the, you know, to the concepts of freedom, to the concepts of the republic. And I just wanted to thank them because, believe it or not, in spirit, in spirit, even they are here fighting the great fight in support of 45, okay? So that's why I, I posted that thumbnail to give you guys that impression, that image, that all of the patriots, all of the founding, you know, the heroes of old, right? <laughs> They're all here in spirit, right? They're all here in spirit supporting Trump. And that includes every white hat that has ever existed since the beginning of our country. Okay, um, they're all supporting 45. So that picture, take it as a as a literal metaphor, um, showing us that you know Trump has support from other white hats that have passed. All right, that have fought, that have lost their lives, that have been assassinated uh, in order to preserve the republic. In order to preserve the republic. Now. The beauty of the white hats, okay, is that they have always existed. You know, when we go back to even a, other times in the past, during the peak of the empires, right? If we want to go back to Babylon, right, as I talk about in the secret government, which reveals the entire history of this battle between the two brotherhoods, right? You have the dark brotherhood, which is associated with the human reptilian bloodline, right, in pursuance of the Luciferian manifesto, which is absolute power fascism and you know the empire right issuing in the empire and then you have the brotherhood of light uh known by various names who operate under the order of melchizedek right you know who are by the way their descendants today are the white hats there is no difference just different time periods different epochs same battle same bloodline different times <laughs> so if you go back in history during the, the rise of the babylonian empire right and that was what 32, 24, 20 BC, right? Which was approximately four, almost 4,000 years ago. Did you guys know that there was also the, the practice and existence of sovereign nation state republics that coexisted outside of the, you know, what history reveals? Yeah, all of this history was left out of the history books. Just like Tartaria, right? There has been many, many different, um, events or, or nations or groups of people that have preserved the concepts of freedom and philosophy of brotherhood and sisterhood and oneness. And these individuals have existed for the last thousands and thousands of years. But the thing about it is that they've always had to hide. They've always had to um, preserve their practices in secret because of the fact that they were always being haunted. They were always being haunted by the Cabal families, those are those that are adhering to the Luciferian agenda. So during the days of Babylon, right, um, there was a huge war to collapse the empire, right, between the nation state of Elam, the nation state of Mintini. I know you guys never heard of these, but this is suppressed history. The nation state of Mintini and Ansham. Elam, Mintini and Ansham were... The, the white hats back then, during the, the rise of the Babylonian Empire, these nation state republics that um, adhere to the principles of righteous, and whether you believe me or not, a lot of this is, is associated with the Mel Melchizedek priesthood, a covenant that was left between Abraham and Melchizedek himself. Okay, so we could say that Abraham, right, was actually. The first Y hat, if you want to call it that way. He's the one who led the um, 
the revolution against the Babylonian Empire. In fact, Nimrod, Nimrod had a dream that a descendant from an opposite bloodline would overthrow him and his empire. And that was Abraham. Okay? So Abraham was the one that organized the, not, the sovereign nation state republics as opposed to the empire, right, or to the fascist you know, model of, of government, and collapsed the entire Babylonian empire. This is real history, guys. And then later we see the same event taking place during the rise of the Medo-Persian empire. Again, Alexander the Great was only used by the cabal families the Babylonian Brotherhood, in order to continue the same agenda that they failed to implement in 3000 BC with the rise of the, I mean, in 2420 uh, BC with the rise of the Babylonian Empire, right? The Macedonian Empire was also collapsed 2000 years later by the same groups of people under different names. These were spiritual colonies that implemented the council that implemented a type of system known as the Commonwealth where everybody prospered, where everybody was considered equal and, and everybody was considered important. And the ruling body were usually elected leaders that were the most wise, like the philosophers, like those that used to use their wisdom and combined with righteousness, because as a high priest within the order of Melchizedek, that's why they called it the righteousness of priesthood. You had to live according to the laws of one, to the principles of the Christ, right? Service to others, um, being, you know, a good ruler in a sense where you would use your wisdom to make sure that the entire community is uplifted and that there is no struggle, that there is no suffering, no illness, okay? These societies existed throughout history. This is what I call the suppressed history of the White Hats. They've always been around, the sovereign nation-state republics, Okay. So if so, the whole point is this, guys, that this battle is now in its last round, in its last phase, and we are living in the best times ever to be witnessing the transition of power from the Babylonian Brotherhood, right, cabal families, to the Melchizedek Brotherhood of the original lost ten tribes of Israel and the original Israelites, which, again, have nothing to do with the Rothschilds and the Zionists that are part of the New World Order, Kazarian, Machia, Cabal families. I shouldn't say that. Oops. <laughs> oh, my God. Sometimes I forget that. Um... <laughs> Thank you for all the uh, love here. I'm seeing a lot of hearts. Um, I also want to thank and extend deep gratitude for everyone that ordered my book, The Secret Government. Thank you guys so much. You guys are going to be blessed with so much knowledge and information that took me years to put in that book. Thank you, thank you. Um, I also wanted to um, let you guys know that I do have a Saturday course because I know some of you work from Monday through Friday. And so I decided to create a Saturday course this coming Saturday. I extended it to now 20 people in order to, uh, again, it's, it's small. It's just gonna be a small class. I'm not gonna go beyond 20 people in order to give other people a chance. So you guys could, um, if you guys feel like you guys wanna take my course, go to my website and I do have some positions available or some spots left this Saturday, okay? So I'm gonna be doing a course this Saturday. Uh, what else, any other announcements? Oh yes, I do have a surprise for you guys, okay? So I did mention that on my, that on Wednesday, not Saturday, Wednesday, I was gonna have a guest who is a human Arcturian hybrid that was actually born on a mothership, okay? Um, I guess I will share who she is. Some of you have heard of her and some of you have not, but she goes by the name of Vivian Chevet. Vivian Chevet is an amazing soul, an amazing Arcturian human hybrid who is beautiful, beautiful, full of loving, positive energy. I've had many opportunities to actually uh, speak with her on panels uh, during these conferences uh, mainly on the Planetary Ascension panel, and she always has a lot of great transmissions to uh, relate to us. So I will be bringing her on this Wednesday at 6 o'clock Pacific Time, 9 o'clock Eastern. So stay tuned for that interview with Vivian Chavet. That's going to be a good one. So going back to um, the suppressed history, right? 
in relationship to how even the founding fathers and all of the white hats that have existed for 300 years that many have been actually assassinated for are all working with trump right there is a belief that these that washington never died that washington ascended and that he joined the the, the realms of, of the ascended masters right the you know what they call the uh, the realms of immortals <laughs> when we ascend we become immortal guys so that is what happened to these founding fathers that is what happened to lincoln they never died they just transitioned into the fifth dimension and it is believed that they their spirit is here working with 45 making sure that he drains the swamp in these you know in this final battle between evil, good and evil so with that in mind um i'm going to go ahead and uh, take some questions here i see a super chat this is from Dr. Rao. Dr. Rao, how you doing, Dr. Rao? Welcome, Dr. Rao. And I believe you're going to be at the Biomed uh, Expo in two weeks, right? Not this weekend coming up, but the following weekend. I'm excited to see you again, doctor. You say, can you please explain the holographic regenerators and replicators? Uh, I loved your group meditation at the end of Saturday's live. i see you end of next week. Welcome, all galactic Jedis, to the Unimind. I love that, the Unimind. The Unimind is the mind of the all, the mind of the all, right? Living in a sentient conscious universe, plants are alive, elements, planets, solar systems, galaxies, the universe, the multiverse. It's all one big cosmic consciousness, consciousness and that is what the Unimind is. It is the underlying field where all of a sudden all of our individual, um, you know, individualized consciousness uh, coming from every living thing blends in into one overall consciousness. That is known as the Unimind. And um, yeah, that's what the Unimind is. So let me explain what holographic regenerators are okay, and replicators. Okay, so everyone here has heard of MedBits. Okay, MedBits cure all diseases known to men. However, they don't generate limbs. Right? If you lose a limb, if you lose an arm, if you lose an a, a leg, then you, they have to use what is known as advanced uh, holographic regenerators. Um, and how that works is it's a, it's a type of technology that uses an advanced hologram to mimic the healthy cells of your body. So like say if you lose an arm, um, you, they put your, this part of your body inside the machine and the machine, what it does, it, it, um, it uses a type of um, hologram to replicate your arm and the cells at its fullest capacity operating at its you know highest like healthy level of reality so as it does that automatically your arm be just like uh, that lizard right when you cut the tail and it grows it, it works in that same way just like that your arm begins to just grow but it takes a few hours so the holographic regenerator pretty much grow limbs within hours like this they could grow an entire arm. They could grow an entire leg. Uh, you name it. Anything that has not cost you to die, of course. You know, you can't grow a head back, right? <laughs> but any limp, yes, holographic regenerators are able to literally grow any limp. Now, a replicator. Okay, so the replicators are used in interstellar advanced societies, mainly civilizations that haven't yet fully realized how to use the light body technology, which is the inner software. So they still depend on external technology. So the replicators are pretty much 3D printing on steroids. You could literally type in anything you want from a car to a house to a ideal dinner that you might want. And within minutes, it doesn't matter if it's a cheesecake or if it's a, a new car or a house. It just replicates it within minutes. And it literally uses uh, zero point energy. So this, the replicators are actually um, tapping into zero point energy um, where, again, you know, they, they draw from zero point energy to create whatever it is that you need within minutes. So to the eye of those that have never heard of these technologies, it would appear to be magical, right? It's just like magic. You type it in and within minutes, you get whatever you typed in. And yes, you know, the chocolate cake tastes like chocolate. The spaghetti tastes like spaghetti. The house is going to be as solid as this table. Uh, how that works, I don't know. But it is a type of technology that draws from the zero point energy, right? The quantum field, right? And it literally materializes uh, physical things 
in you know the 3D or in the 4D in this case, because even the 4D is very physical, uh, instantaneously. So that's that's what a replicator is. So it is known that the uh, breakaway groups uh, within the secret space programs have been using replicators because obviously they didn't really evolve spiritually. They didn't activate their light body. So they didn't have access to the internal software. So they became dependent on external technology. But we, on the other hand, with the activation of our dormant DNA, we are going to have access to our inner software. We are going to have access to our inner software which means that in the fifth dimensional earth and above, we won't need any of these technologies. We're going to be our own replicator, right? Instead of using hover cars or, you know, anti-gravity uh, aircraft to travel, we're going to be using our light body to travel. So that's the difference between fourth dimensional reality and fifth dimensional reality and above. So there are many uh, civilizations of a type one, in a type two um, that are implementing these technologies because they haven't yet figured out how to activate their internal technology. All right, so somebody's saying, what does all this have to do with CERN? Okay, um, again, we are living in a reality where everything and everything and anything is possible, right? This is proven through quantum physics. There is a phenomenon known as superposition. Do your research, guys. Study superposition. Superposition tells us that there are multiple states of reality operating all simultaneously at the same time. So as I speak right now, there are negative timelines where the cabal is using the particle accelerator one last time to open up a portal to let, to let in more nasty guys, okay? More nasty guys. Just like Aleister Crawley did uh, over a century ago when he let in the entity known as Iowa, which was the last of the beast that has been ruling, you know, the mind of the cabal, okay? Um, now, there are also positive timelines where the, instead of the cabal having access to this, you know, the technology insert, the Y hats have the, the access to the technology insert. And now they're going to use the technology pretty much because of the fact that the dark cats have been using it for the last 30 years to throw us into these alternative timelines, right? Um, where we should have had the solar flash in 2012. But again, due to the timeline war and due to the Mandela effect, it seems like we've been shifting from parallel universe to parallel universe over the last 30 to 40 years. So the white hats, what they're going to do is they're going to reverse all of that, but that's taking place on the positive timeline. So on the positive timeline, the Y hats are going to use the same technology to reverse all the Mandela effects to collapse all of those timelines where the solar flash didn't happen so that the solar flash could happen. Hopefully that makes sense. So we have to understand that there are multiple realities, multiple Earths that are coexisting simultaneously all at the same time. This is bizarre, guys. I know this sounds very, very weird, but... Uh, two movies to watch so that you guys can grasp what I'm saying is Spider-Man the Multiverse and Doctor Strange the Multiverse of Madness. Watch those movies. That is exactly what's happening right now. However, because of the fact that on both timelines, both the negatives and the positives, there will be an interdimensional shift because both functions, both groups are opening up the portals. But for those that are in the positive that stays in the positive timeline, they're not going to be witnessing any more chaos, any more bad things happening, right? Only good things are going to be happening. However, for those that end up in the negative timeline because they are not vibrating with the qualities of tolerance, non-judgment, compassion, empathy, these are important qualities to be, you know, vibrating with at this time in order to make the positive timeline. Only the wicked are going to be going to the negative timeline. So that's the difference. That's the difference. Again, as a reminder, guys, next week, um, Monday at 10 o'clock a.m. Pacific time, which is 1 p.m. Eastern time, I will be doing the Global Mass Meditation. If you guys please join me, that would be great. And if you can't, you can always watch it on the replay. But please, uh, during the times of 10 a.m., 11 p.m., 
Western, which is 1 p.m., um, 2 p.m. Eastern, just please, you know, take some a few minutes off to just contribute your focus to whatever whatever it is that you want to intend for the new earth, right? We're, remember, we're co-creating, right? There is, our minds are like, how can I say it? We're, we're all connected, right, to this huge, you know, hologram. And whatever we think contributes to what ultimately happens because of the fact that we're all connected to this hologram somehow. <laughs> I want to welcome some people. I see... Uh, Sam is in the house. Benjamin is in the house. Evelyn is in the house. Claire Morgan is in the house. Who else is in the house? Ravens Wings 33 is in the house. Chickhead Bug is in the house. Sam McKintia. Jennifer. Uh, Jennifer. Let me put on my glasses. I can see better. I want to acknowledge everyone. Over 1,254 people in the house, or exactly 1,254. Silva Vidal, Michelle Gosnell, who else is in the house? Jiminy, Jimena Vargas, not the Mothman. <laughs> not the Mothman thinks it's my birthday every day. <laughs> Again, I'm, my birthday is not till November. <laughs> Let's see who else is in the house. Simone S is in the house. John, Joshua is in the house. Sunshine, how you doing, Sunshine? Thanks a lot, sister, for uh, your letter. That was beautiful and so thoughtful and generous of you. Thank you, thank you. And I will go over those papers, by the way, that you send me. I'm going to study those thoroughly. They, they look uh, very important. Just based on me, you know, going over them briefly, they look very important. Let's see. Truth Seeker Forever is in the house. Gary is in the house. Hillary Wendorf is in the house. Uh, K Prince of Peace. Or Koji Prince of Peace is in the house. And who else is in the house? Harry B. David Hakes. Andromeda Daisy, MJF, and everyone else. Thank you guys so much for being here. Um, again, I wanted for those that have ordered the Secret Government. Thank you, thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you, thank you. Um, let's see. I'm just going to go ahead and take random questions. I could only learn how to control my mouse here. Oops. <laughs> All right, I think I'm gonna have to take questions from my phone just because I can't access them from my laptop. There they are. Okay. So, um, D Deidre Swan says, I ordered two of the, your new book, and I am excited to read the book. Thank you, Deidre. Uh, who else is here? I ordered two, says Deidre. Thank you. Thank you. Harry B. is in the house. I'm just going to be looking for random questions. And that's it. <laughs> Patricia Fearless says, set a mouse trap. You will control the mouse. Not a bad idea. All right, so Neo is in the house. How's it going, Brother Neo? Thanks so much for your super chat. He says, love and appreciate you, Ishmael. Likewise, Neil. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Joyful. Joyful. Thank you so much for your generosity. She says, Ishmael, are you saying the EBS will happen soon before the Great Solar Flash? I think it's probably going to be in that sequence. Yes. I think it's going to be in that sequence. Or it can happen at the same time. I'm still kind of in the middle between the, that those two, you know, 
sequences of events. I've always used to think that there were, it's like the chicken and the egg scenario, right? They just come to, you know, at the same time, they emerge at the same time. I used to always think that way, but I could be wrong, but uh, I guess we're going to all find out joyful. And then Joshua key. Thank you so much for your super chat for the number five. He says is eighties Beetlejuice film made in the eighties have any correlation to the Beetlejuice star system in Orion? That is a good question, Joshua. Joshua, but I do not know, brother. I don't have, I don't know. I've, I've seen Beetlejuice as a as a teenager, perhaps when I was 12, 13, not so much, you know, like a long time ago. Um, it didn't really intrigue me, honestly. I, I, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I didn't understand Beetlejuice, okay? I watched it when I was probably 10 or 11 or 12, and it just, it was over my head. All I know is that it was about this creepy guy that, you know, his, his head came off. It was like in the spirit realm or a ghost. And I don't know. It was just, to me, it was one of those weird movies that just I, I couldn't understand, to be honest. Cosmic Goddess, thank you so much for the super chat. She says, hi, Ishmael. What time is solar eclipse happening on April 8th? Also, from what uh, you're saying, bifurcation of timelines is going to take place on that day, correct? Yes. Absolutely, and that explains why the motherships, uh, particularly the uh, Jerusalem, the New Jerusalem, the Dove, and the other biosphere, there's three of them, three biospheres, huge ones that are just parked right above um, North America, mainly over the U.S. lands, maybe over the U.S. lands, because they are just going to make sure that nothing horrible goes down, nothing you know bad happens here in the States, because again, the, according to the Cabal's negative timeline, oh my God, they were going to wreak some havoc on that day. They were going to use their last ditch of effort to, you know, go down with a bang. But the Earth Alliance and the Galactics reversed it. They definitely reversed it. Plady Soul three three, thank you so much for your super chat, sister, and for the number one. She says, "Will you be in in Lige? What will you be in Laj to communicate and hang out with all types of animals without being attacked? Yes, that's a, one of the good things that I'm looking forward to in the new earth is being able to sit down and have hour long conversations with bears, mountain lions, uh, alligators, <laughs> and all that. You know what I mean? So, yes, we're going to be able to hang out with animals and uh, without being attacked, the wild animals. So, yes, that is correct. And I believe that there are certain passages in certain holy books that talk about that. That in the millennium, even the animals, the wild animals, are going to be friendly. <laughs> They're going to be friendly and non-carnivore carnivorous anymore. They're not going to eat meat anymore. I think they're going vegan in the millennium. <laughs> Stuart Williams is in the house. How are you doing, Stuart? Thanks so much for being here. He says, what happens to my family, house, cars after April 8th? Uh, nothing. You're, you know, you're still going to have your car. You're still gonna, guys, again, don't expect for like, you know, reality to shift on April 8th. All that's happening is there's going to be a, a, a splitting of all the infinite amount of parallel Earth realities that are coexisting at the same time. They're, all they're going to do is just collapse into a negative timeline, a positive timeline, and then there's going to be a middle timeline. So that's all that's going to happen. All right? We're not going to be like, you know, our reality isn't going to be changed. We're still going to wake up. I'm still going to be here. I'm still going to be broadcasting. I'm still going to be going live. Um, but we're going to start seeing some positive events taking place, some positive changes. Especially as we get closer to November. To November. You know, it's my good buddy and friend, Tom Numbers. Shout out to Tom Numbers. Always talks about the 5th of November. <laughs> the 5th of November. I did do an interview with Tom Numbers uh, this past, what, Sunday, two days ago. So, or was it yesterday? Yesterday. <laughs> I did an interview with Tom Numbers. If you guys want to check that out, it is in my communities um, section. So if you go to my community section here on my YouTube, you can watch my interview with Tom Numbers. He's got an amazing mind when it comes to gematria, uh, gematria and numbers. I mean, the guy 
correlates every event, every name to a number, which is fascinating. Again, that's his gift, right? We are all born with gifts. Carm Camilla from Canada says, got your book. Thank you, Carmela. Thank you. You are going to love it, guys. Um, from what I understand, there's been a few people that have already started reading it. They, they got it a few days ago. and They're like in chapter 9 already and 10. And they just can't put it down. They're telling me, Ishmael, your book just leaves me in suspense. It's like watching a, a good movie with different you know, parts and just wanting to, to, to finish the entire sequel and not wanting to put it down. <laughs> so that's what I've been hearing. That it's very hard to put down just because, you know, every chapter, every chapter is good, especially as we go from, you know, again, going back to what happened 6,000 years ago, right, with the implementation of the Leviathan bloodline, right, the reptilian human bloodline, which was, by the way, eliminated during the Great Flood, and then another act of the, you know, of another bad, blasphemous, abominable act took place that caused that evil bloodline to Again, unfortunately, you rule our world for another 6,000 years. And a lot of that corresponds with the age of the ram and the age of the Pisces. So they knew that they had two um, world ages or two ages, uh, which is one world age. Technically, there's two zodiacs that make up a world age, 5,135 years or 25 years. So they knew that they had one world age, two zodiacs to rule the world. But at the same time, the Brotherhood of Light was always there to, to, you know, combat them, to counteract them, to make sure that they don't execute their, um, you know, fascist agenda. Jennifer, Jennifer Abernathy is asking, how will we know the bifurcation happened? Well, again, as things lead up to November... We're going to be seeing the reinstatement of 45 or Kennedy, right? The White Hats are pushing from both angles, right? Giving pressure to the Democrats. Um, so, yeah, that's what we're going to be seeing. Or even before the, before the E-L-E-C-T-I-O-N. I don't want to say that word here. I don't know if that's a flag word. But before November or by November, we're, we are going to be witnessing a transition in power here in the States, right? Uh, this is coming from Steel, Steel Ray. Thank you so much for the number one for your super chat. Steel Ray is asking, Ishmael, how long will the meditation on the 8th last? Thank you. It's probably okay. So I'm going to give about 50, 10 to 15 minutes for people to jump on. So we'll probably just do a little greet um, for the first 10, 15 minutes to allow enough people to jump on. So around 10, 15, uh, I'm going to lead a meditation. All right. And then after I lead us into this meditation, uh, we're going to be holding that silence for a period of time. I would say till probably 11, because I hear that at 11, which is equivalent to 2, two Eastern time, 11 o'clock Eastern time, that's when there's going to be a peak. That's when the, the um, solar eclipse is reaching the horizon right across, known as a town known as uh, Rapture. That's where it's going to be in its totality, which means that's when all the energies – that's when the Hadron is going to be fired. That's when NASA is going to shoot those rockets. So what we're doing is we are joining the battle with the forces of light that are operating on all these other dimensions and all these other realities, our galactic brothers and beyond, beyond them. We're going to be doing our part here in the third dimension. So it's going to be a collaborated effort of the by the forces of light uh, taking place on every level of reality, all right, all the way from the 12th dimension to the three dimension where we are going to be doing our part too. So that, that way we could ship as many people as possible into the positive ascending timeline, at least the good people of the earth, right? Not the NPCs, of course. <laughs> Thank you guys for all the love. And if you guys haven't subscribed, please do. I want to welcome any new members that might be in the house. Thank you so much for being here. Elena Love, thank you so much for the super chat, sister. And welcome, Elena Love. I have never seen you here. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Let's see.
So yes, throughout history, something that you guys are going to discover in my book, The Secret Government, is that all throughout history, the Wyatts have been associated with the priesthood of Melchizedek, which is the priesthood of righteousness. King Arthur was a righteous king. King David, all right? The lost ten tribe of, of Israel, which later camouflaged themselves as, again, the Saxons, the Visigoths, the Ostrogoths, the Celts, right? The different, you know, independent spiritual societies that coexisted with the Roman Empire before the year, you know, Europe as we know it came into play. <laughs> they were all uh, aligned with the principles of righteousness, okay? Um, I mean, a lot of this ties into the war between good and evil, guys. It does, you know? It's just an interdimensional warfare. Amanda, Amanda Tompery is asking a question. Will we see Diana emerge between now and, and then, Ishmael? I would say that um, absolutely, and as well as JFK Jr. So, yes, I do. I do believe that uh, they will now that the you know that the bad guys are gone, they won't no longer be facing any threats, and therefore they're going to be able to come out in the open and address the American people. And I think that when they do that, it's going to be very hard for the normie or the unawakened or the unpro or the person that's still programmed. It's it's not going to be as hard. I mean, it's not going to be as hard for them to um, to snap out of their hypnosis. Of course, it's going to come with the shock, right? Just like when we first, you know, woke up, we, we were shocked, right? Con I think there is a level of cognitive dissonance um, here, right? <laughs> Experienced by everyone who is shaken out of their programming. So I think that uh, that is going to help the unawakened wake up. Yes, M Elite 1111 is saying it's like we're living in a real life soap opera. Absolutely, guys. Um, life is a script. Life is a script, okay? The beauty of it all is that we are both the directors and the actors in our life, okay? So there was a script for the collective that was laid down by the holographic inserts, right? that was implemented by AI in Atlantean times when Enki and the bad Anunnaki took over, right? That program is now coming to an end. That is the, the, the collective uh, narrative. That's a program that has been reinforced over and over and over throughout all of history, right? Mo most recently within the last 500 years, guess who these invincible architects have been, right? I'm not gonna mention their names, but they are the secret military order that runs the Vatican. And I had one person in the uh, Tom Numbers interview um, challenge me on that. She says, you know, I've been Roman. She says she's Roman Catholic, and she believes that the church, that the, the Roman Catholic Church is actually a Christian institution with without any bad bones in their body. And that is not true, or in their organization. So I had one person, I guess, get triggered uh, when I mentioned in the Tom Numbers interview that, that even the globalist agenda and all the bad things are happening all are connected to rome right which is the vatican and because i said that i triggered somebody who was i'm sorry to say catholic and they believe that the organization has nothing to do with evil but again that's going to be another trigger for many many people that are religious and let's just get technical and real here the catholic church was never a christian institution as we know christianity in terms of what Jesus, Yeshua, uh, taught, okay? They actually were the opposite of that, all right? The Catholic Church, right? You will know them by their fruit. The Catholic Church throughout all of history have been exercising, have been implementing horrific Holocaust, Inquisition after Inquisition, you know, um, drunking in the blood of the saints for 1,700 years. And as you would come to know in The Secret Government, my book, my new book, is that even the modern-day wars up until now are still being orchestrated by the powers of the Vatican 
who are just trying to resurrect their whole their age old Roman Empire under a new name now. Right. So I know this book is going to piss off a lot of Catholics, a lot of devoted religious people who think that the Catholic Church is Christian, but it's really not Christian. Right. It's Satanist. At the core of the church, it was always run by the Luciferian Brotherhood. In fact, it is known as the Second Babylon, right? The opposite church. The opposite church, the Second Babylon, the imitation church. There was nothing Christian about that church. In fact, it is, and, uh, it is blasphemous to say that that church was Christian, you know? When all they've been doing has been sacrificing in the masses, sacrificing humans in the masses, for their uh, reptilian overlords. Joyful. Thank you so much for your super chat, sister. She says, Ishmael, when will Elvis, Michael Jackson, and all the celebrities be back? Now, I didn't know about Elvis. I heard Michael Jackson, perhaps. Um, that's up to you. I don't know if Elvis was, again, if he faked his, you know what, um, I don't know that. I don't have any intel on Elvis, guys. I'm sorry. So I guess even I'm going to be shocked to find out that Elvis faked his death. But thank you for sharing that, Joyful. I mean, how, how old would he be right now if he faked his death? He'd probably be in his 80s, 90s, I would say. Would he still be alive? No, my new book is not yet available in audio, only in paperback and in um, Kindle for now. I'm working on it, though. You know, first it's going to be ready. First, they're going to come out with the uh, hardcover and then probably the audio, but not for another couple of months or so. Derry Elise says, Ishmael, just received your book. Can't wait to start reading it. Now I have all three. Awesome, awesome. You're going to love it. And in a way, you know, both, when you read one book, it'll help you understand the other and vice versa. They both complement each other. I'm looking for questions. If you guys could also uh, write your questions in capital letters, that would be greatly appreciated. Now, I do know that JFK Jr. did fake his death, and so did his father, but I also found out that his father died at, died of old age uh, maybe a year and a half or two years ago. So that that is what I've heard. But again, you know, um, go with your intuition when it comes to this stuff, guys. You know, learn how to use discernment. Learn how to also check with your internal guidance system, right, when it comes to confirming information. I always encourage people to do so. Your intuition will never lie to you. That is connected to your higher self. Let's see, I'm just looking for questions here. So this is a question from Michael, Michael Quillette. He says, hi, Ishmael. Do you know the Eggmasters? I've never heard of the Eggmasters, Michael. I've never heard of them. Eck as an E-C-K? Never heard of them.
cons conspiratory said two people asked in the original Mark Z requested Ishmael interview. I don't know what that means. Who is Mark Z? Does anybody know who Mark Z is? This is a question from Stuart Williams. I think I've already answered that question. All right, let me go all the way to the bottom to see recent chats. <clears throat> Any recent questions that are just popping up? Let's see. So this is a good question from Fabio Fabio Pollici. I don't think I've ever addressed your questions, Fabio. Fabio Pollici is asking, hi, Ishmael, what do you think about the God that helped Moses to save his people in Israel? Well, Moses was part of the Melchizedek Brotherhood, so he was working with the good guys. Moses was of the white brotherhood, of the light. Again, this is during a time when Ramses, who comes from the bloodline, again, of the reptilian-human hybrids, um, took power in Egypt. And because Ramses took power, Moses, there was an attempt on Moses' life because they knew the prophecies, of course. So Moses was raised outside of the Egyptian empire in order to preserve his life. And his story is very similar to the story of Jesus and to the story of Seuss. Again, those are the similarities. They spoke Seuss. Jesus and Moses were put in a basket in a river, right? Not Jesus, I'm sorry. Moses and Seuss. Uh, Jesus had to hide by fleeing, of course. But both Moses and Seuss were put in a basket in order to preserve their lives because of the fact that the current ringing tyrant wanted to kill off due to a prophecy that they understood. So we could say that Moses was just like Seuss. And Moses was also raising an army of freedom fighters that eventually brought down the Ramses Empire era of Egypt. So definitely he was working with the Brotherhood of Light. Yes, he was part of the priesthood of righteousness. Again, the Brotherhood of Light has always been associated with the priesthood of righteousness, the king of righteousness, King David, Jesus, you know, King Arthur. These are all, you know, the grand masters of the Knights Templars, right? When they were fighting the Vatican, they were the white knights during the dark medieval ages. You know, they never left the scene, guys. They never left the scene. Sylvia Vidal is asking me, Ishmael, do the NPCs know that they're not human? Um, I don't think they're aware. I don't think that they have any consciousness. I think that in their minds, they, they believe, that at least they're, they're programmed to believe, very similar to the Greys, they're programmed to believe that, that they are important or that they are people, but it's just a program. It is just a, a, a program that is running them, right? And that program is being controlled by the Archons. The negative entities, which, which also express themselves through artificial intelligence. Again, the archon entities and artificial intelligences are one and the same, right? You can't have AI without the other. In fact, I mentioned this before and I'll mention it again. For those that are new to my channel, the pre-existing consciousness that animates the machine, AI, is the archon energy, the archon consciousness. I'm going to take two more questions.
You're welcome. Lee, Lee Archer saying, Ishmael, I just wanted to tell you that you always make me feel much better when I start to get scared. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome, guys. Yes, Neil. Neil's asking, will people in the 4th D be living with extraterrestrials? Absolutely. That's where we're going to have a Star Trek type of society. Right. And then in the fifth day, we're going to be magical. We are going to use our own inner technology. Very similar to the Lyrans in, in the history of the, of the galaxy. I described how the Lyrans were super psychic and how they used the internal technology and had no clue of the external technology. And all they understood and lived by was according to the laws of one. I'm looking for one final question. All right, this is a good question from Vanessa Antonelli. I don't think I've ever addressed your question. So Vanessa Antonelli is asking me, what is the real reason they do time changes, fall back, one hour spring? The reason is because we are using a wrong timekeeping system. Again, this goes back to the idea that we are not even in alignment with the uh, accurate time keep, keeping system, which is um, in synchronicity with the natural cycles of the elements, the, the planets, and the universe. So that is the reason why we have this time change where all of a sudden we go back in time or we move up in time is because of the fact that we use the wrong calendar. So, and also, um, let's see. It has been revealed that according to the original solar calendar, the new year always begins in the spring. All right. The new year always begins in the spring. And that is a fact. In fact, the names of the Gregorian calendar, the names of the month were named after Roman emperors, by the way. D, Jesus, T, trust in you. Thank you so much for the number one. And your super chat is saying, I just jumped on. Not sure if you already discussed. When and where will med beds be available? God bless. Well, when the Y hats, again, restore our republic and the rest of the world, and there is no more dark hats, um, they're going to be available to the masses immediately. They're going to be rolled out because of the severity of the illnesses and sicknesses that are taking that are happening. Uh, right now. So they're going to be rolled out quickly. But again, I, I don't give dates. And anyone who gives dates is not telling you the truth. They're just speculating, right? And also understand that there is this element of time fluctuating due to the time wars that are constantly throwing us into alternative universes. And that's why I said that the on both realities, of, of both spectrums of the realities, the Hadron Collider will be fired up, again, depending on which Earth you're in. If you're in the negative Earth, they're going to be fired up by the dark cats in order to bring in hell on Earth. If you're living in the positive Earth, it's going to be fired up by the good guys, and then they're going to bring in heaven on Earth. And, of course, there's going to be a middle path. So with that in mind, guys, thank you so much for being here. I will see you guys Wednesday night at 6 o'clock Pacific time, 9 o'clock Eastern. And don't forget, next week... 10 a.m. Pacific time group meditation on YouTube. And I will see you guys then. May the God force be with you always. Continue shining the light to the best of your ability. And never forget that you are never alone. We have the help of all kinds of beautiful angels and interdimensionals that are part of our cosmic family. All right, guys. Talk to you later.